Today, Mischief and I have been thinking about canine body language and also observations. And whilst in this video we're not going to be looking at all aspects of both of these subjects, they are massive to be able to really understand your dog and be able to learn from what it is your dog is telling you. Remember your dog is communicating with you all the time, but how often do we actually listen to them? A canine body language instructor I know talks about listening with your eyes, and I would say do just that. When we're watching our dogs, when we're observing our dogs, the first thing we want to be thinking about is context. In other words, what else is going on? It's easy enough to observe something with our dog and because we know our dog to make an assumption that that is happening because dot dot dot. And we're making that judgment based on a knowledge of our dog on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes it's really useful when we're watching our own dogs to think of them in terms of being a client dog and to try and look at things with an objective eye rather than a subjective eye. It's so easy to assume that something is happening because we know the animal rather than actually thinking what is going on with that dog, what is the environment of the dog, is the dog able to cope with that situation and could that behaviour, could that calming signal, could what the dog is doing be influenced by something in the environment, something we're asking of the dog. The next thing to think about is how often does that dog offer that particular behaviour? Is it just a once-off situation or is it something that's happening frequently? Also, I would be looking at what might be the trigger, what might be causing the dog to offer up that particular behaviour. Could we be out in the garden and we're doing something with the dog, something that is challenging? Have we got people who have arrived at the house which is making it difficult for the dog? Maybe a strange dog is with us who the dog doesn't know and it's influencing the way our dog is actually behaving. So again, let's think of the environment, let's think about what's going on with the dog and really help the dog to make a good choice and to be able to interpret what it is the dog is actually saying to us. Another thing to think about is what else is actually going on. It's easy enough to be looking at a behaviour of a dog, a calming signal or whatever and to make an assumption that that is the message that the dog is trying to tell us. Sometimes we have to look at a combination of behaviours. Maybe the dog is doing something, then something else. We might also want to be listening to the breathing of the dog. Is the dog breathing in a shallow way? Is the dog breathing in a deep way? How does the dog move? Does the do dog move calmly? Does the dog move at 100 miles an hour? Have we got our dog on the lead? Does the dog behave differently on lead? Or does the dog behave differently when they are off lead? How does our dog ha behave when we're handling the dog in comparison to when somebody else is handling the dog? All these things help us to build up a really good picture of our dog and really can help us to understand dogs. I have a background in humpback whale research and it's absolutely amazing when you're on the boat and you see a 12 meter humpback whale and her calf approaching the boat and you can look with your eyes. You can't influence the outcome as you might be able to with a dog, but there's so much information which you can learn just by watching a mother and calf humpback. How do they interact with our boat? How do they interact with each other? If another whale approaches them, how do they interact? It's just the same when we're watching our dog dogs. So be a dog watcher. Watch what our dogs are telling us. We can learn so much by observations and I will do more videos on this subject in due course. Thanks very much for listening and look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!